Welcome to the reunion of the 1991-1992 Indiana Hoosiers. Big round of applause. So the first question, uh, we'll go to uh, you, Todd. It's hard to describe to young fans how great the Big Ten Conference was in those days, the early 90s, arguably the heyday for the league. How tough was it? night in and night out to play in the Big Ten in those years. Which Todd? Todd? You talking to me? Why not? Go ahead, Todd. You start. <laughs> I'm not used to getting questions asked to me at a yes. press conference, so <laughs> I'll take liberty in answering this one. Uh, the Big Ten Conference, if you looked at teams, um, you know, probably now there's two or three teams that are the top tier, and then there's maybe uh, four or five in the next tier, and then it drops off significantly. It wasn't like that um, back in 1992, uh, or back in when we all played. I think it was much more um, difficult to go on the road and go play teams, uh, and, and everyone was much more um, leveled out, I would say. I don't, I, it, was, it came down to the last two weeks of who would win the Big Ten, it seemed like almost every year. I don't think anyone ever stood out and, and just ran away with it other than uh, Calvert's senior year when he just took us all, took everybody out of it early on. <laughs> Um, but, you know, the, the Big Ten has always been a really tough physical uh, conference. And I think, you know, I, I didn't build my body up till I got to 47 years old <laughs> like I am today to be able to withstand it. Um, so I think that all of us uh, were just really um, excited to be able to go and win in some of the different arenas and some of the different places that uh, uh, we got to go play against some of the Hall of Fame coaches that we got to play against. Brian, you're one of the great players in the history of Indiana basketball, Big Ten MVP, All-American, all of that. But you were, you were a young one on this team. What was it like to go against these guys every single day in practice? And how did it help you become the player that you became? Well, they're all great. But <clears throat> what really helped me was the guy sitting right next to me. He, uh, even though Don forgot he was on the team earlier tonight, <laughs> uh, he was pretty solid. And so... At my position, I really went up my first year, redshirt year, so I never scored a point for this team for anybody that uh, wasn't around during those days, not one. But I got to play against Eric Anderson and Calvert and guard those guys and have them guard me every day. And so um, <clears throat> all Big Ten, all American players, which was huge for me, you know, straight out of high school. So as a redshirt, I had to chase him around every day, and, and that was not easy, and I wasn't very good at it, but it helped me a lot later on in the leadership that these guys, we had great upperclassmen, and so great leadership, guys you learn from as a, as a young player, so it was great. Eric, I believe this team, if memory served, had six 1,000-point scores, five all Big Ten players, four All-Americans, two Big Ten MVPs, the all-time leading rebounder, the all-time leading scorer, what was it like to play on that type of team? Wow. <laughs> uh, amazing, apparently. Um, um, it, it, I tell you what, it, it, it was a lot of fun. We, we had a lot of competition and practice, which, which always made us better. And uh, I remember when Brian was red shirting, um, I was like, I don't know why this kid isn't playing. Because I used to have to guard him, long arm, could handle the ball. So, yeah, from top to bottom, the team was really strong. And it made the, the practices really competitive. And I think that's what made us a pretty good team. Tall Todd. Uh, playing for Coach Knight in, in those days, what was that experience like? And how well coached was this team, especially come tourney time? You couldn't ask me that one? Come on. <laughs> no, I think this team was prepared from day one. I think that was part of Coach's mentality was that he's going to come out and give 110% and he expected everybody on the court. So he led from, you know, day one, first day of, of practice. He didn't let up. And I think these guys, with their leadership and abilities, they came out from day one. And, and each year, everybody got better, especially for me being a freshman that year. Coming from a, a tiny town in the middle of nowhere, to playing with guys like this, it was a great learning experience, and Coach really emphasized everybody playing their best abilities. Matt, the road to the Final Four, some tough competition along the way, and it seemed game after game got better and better, ultimately culminating with a blowout victory against UCLA. How tough was this team in, in March? Well, I think what a lot of people may not remember is we got blown out by UCLA in the beginning of the year in a preseason tournament. 
And so we learned a lot from that and developed along the year and just kept getting better and better. And by then, we were really hitting on all cylinders. And uh, the All-Americans and the great players that, that I got to play with um, like to take a lot of credit that they played against each other. But the real reason they're any good is because they had to battle against me every day. <laughs> so I'll give myself credit since they're not giving me any. No, but it was great fighting with these guys every day and, and uh, playing with them over the, over, the, over the course of the season and getting better. And, and uh, we had a great time together. Talking to uh, Todd earlier, Alan, about how great the Big Ten was in those days. But if you broke it down in position groups, nowhere was it tougher night in and night out than on the front line. You had some battles against some high-quality opposition in those years. Yes, the, uh, the conference was deep. Uh, there were a lot of, lot of, lot of great players. Um, every game was just a, was a big battle. And, um, you know, P Purdue had great players, Michigan. I mean, you could pretty much, there were no easy wins. I guess the uh, Northwestern used to be a little <laughs> bit less talented, but still not an easy win at their, at their place. And they had great players who went on to play in the pros too. So it was, um, the league was just deep. Um, uh, that's what that's what made it fun, and that's what made it uh, made it great accomplishments, the wins and the uh, the games we were able to win, and uh, the successes we had. There's a lot, a lot of good memories playing with these guys. Calvert, I think an underrated part of you being the all-time leading scorer in the history of Big Ten, if it's even possible, is the fact that you were on a team where all the starters averaged in double figures. So this was a team that shared the ball. It wasn't one man uh, on, on his own. How, how did all, all of your teammates kind of lighten the load for you to, to be able to get you into open space? They were all great. I mean, all the way down the line, they're all great in their own way. And, uh, and when you have a lot of great players, they can do a lot of different things. Uh, it just makes your job that much easier. Um, it, it, and that's, that's just the nature of a, that's, that's what makes a great team, bottom line. Bob, some of your uh, recollections of uh, this team, the journey they went on over the course of the year, and how far they, how far they traveled in the tournament. Well, the thing about this group and, uh, and the guys that they played with right ahead of them and that and came along right after, uh, for three years, from uh, 91 through 93, these guys were always in the top five. They, they were always up at, uh, knocking on the door. They'd get knocked, they'd lose a game, and they'd drop a little bit, then they'd be right back up there. And it was, it was uh, this group and that era is the best, in my opinion, ever at Indiana University. It doesn't have a championship banner, and they should have. It, it's a, it's a real crime that they don't, because they were the best team in the country, and uh, uh, it, it and, and really uh, reached their peak in the tournament with this '92 team, and then the '93 team was uh, just went on from there, and, and would have been the third Indiana team to go 18 and 0 in the Big Ten, the only teams to go 18 and 0 in the Big Ten. And Allen not taking a vacation on the uh, it, uh, w with Allen, this team was uh, would have gone 18 and 0, and that, and that's a phenomenal achievement in the Big Ten, as competitive as that is. Uh, you go up and down the line here with this talent and, and those guys that aren't here. Uh, you can imagine what practices were like. It was it was it was as, as spirited as any game, and, and as uh, it was great development for these these kids as a, as a team to, uh, to come on with that kind of competition. Now, one of the uh, neat anniversaries coming up on March 4th, which is the last Sunday of the Big Ten tournament as it works out, that will be the 25th anniversary of when Calvert Cheney hit the basket that made him the, the Big, Big Ten career scoring leader. For that record to still be there 25 years later is an amazing achievement and tells you what kind of player this guy was on a team with all these guys, as you say, double figure scores. I have to ask this question on behalf of my 17-year-old self who was screaming at the television when it occurred, the call in the Duke game and how it uh, unfortunately altered history. Any recollections from that game in the Final Four? Which call? <laughs> I think we all fouled out. Which call? Yeah. <laughs> 
And then finally to wrap up, um, the camaraderie that you guys had as teammates, uh, both then and now, how special was it to be a part of the era that Bob just described? And that's for, for all. You know, I think one of the things that gets overlooked um, in today's world of basketball is, is if you look at up here now, five of the seven of us are from the state of Indiana. And Eric's from Chicago, just outside. Chris Reynolds was from Peoria, you know, not very far away. And, and Big Todd was from Michigan, although it's way up there. Uh, it, it still borders Indiana. And, and I think he had the idea, and, and those guys had the idea of what Coach Knight was like and what they were signing up for when we came in here. And to have this many guys, I mean, if you include Pat Graham, Mr. Basketball in the state of Indiana, along with all, all of us being from Indiana, I, I think that had something to do with all of us kind of understanding what was expected of us and what we were trying to accomplish. And you just don't see a whole lot of that anymore. Um, and, and that's unfortunate. And hopefully, I, I mean, I honestly believe the way the program is headed right now, I think it's probably going back in that direction. Yeah, and uh, you know, I think the most important thing for me was with all the, the, the greatness we have up here on the, at this table, I think uh, there were no egos whatsoever on this team. Everybody got along great. Yeah, there was, uh, just like Bob said, there were spirited, competitive practices every day. Uh, we, got in, we got into one another, but at the same time, we knew uh, that we were all there for one purpose, and that was to win, win championships, and uh, have the aspirations of trying to win a, a national championship. And, uh, but like I said, with our guys, no egos whatsoever. Everybody knew their job, did it to the best of their ability. And uh, that's what having a great team is all about. And I, I followed up just by saying that uh, one of the things that I really, just looking back, playing on different teams, different places over the years, is that similar to how Kyle was saying, I never heard anybody complain about getting shots. And I don't know if I was just in my own little world where I didn't hear it or something, but I never heard anybody complain about getting shots, worry about getting points. Everything we did was just about trying to get a win. And I think that's what made those are some of the best memories I had that just made it fun. We we're just trying to get a win, and then everybody ended up scoring a whole bunch of points. We ended up winning a whole bunch of games and, and having individual success within that team success. And I think that's what, what made it really special. I think that's what special teams do, and um, that's the kind of basketball I like to watch. Um, you never saw anybody out there trying to just go get a basket or get numbers. It, it just didn't matter. All we wanted to do was win, and I think that's when you have um, the best success. Yeah. Yeah, and on top of that, I think when I came early in 89, I came with Eric and Jamal, and that wasn't soon after the national championship in 87. And I think we had a lot of great leadership um, to look at as an example of how to go about every day in practice and being an Indiana basketball player. And so I think we learned from them. It was passed on. I was like, you know, it's not going to be easy. We all know it's not always easy to play for someone like Coach Knight. We know there's going to be challenges. We know it's not going to be uh, roses every day. But we came and they kind of showed us what we needed to do to get it done. And then I think we were able to share that with the team, the players that came in next. I think Eric and Jamal and me learned from Lyndon Jones and, and people like Brian Sloan and Jeff Oliphant and Magnus Bilkowski. And we carried it on that same way of dealing with being an Indiana basketball player and trying to win every day and focus on what's important. Um, we were able to share that with the players coming in. I think it translated great. And we always just seemed to get along. And I think that was a big key to it was the ability to, for the players that were there to share with the new players coming in to welcome them in the right way and tell them, look, this is how it's going to be. This is what we have to do. And, you know, you're on board or, or it's not going to work. And most everybody stayed on board. Of course, we lost a few here and there. Um, but the ones that stayed were really committed. So that's what made it, what's, that's what made it special. All right, one more time for the 1991-1992 Indiana Hoosiers.